Connor reporting for Kids First. Today, today I'm interviewing Christine Rashaw. What was the hardest part of making a movie adaptation of a book? Um, I think part of the hard part is a lot of kids really love this book. So, um, so we wanted to make sure that they were happy with that. I don't know if you've ever seen a movie um, based on a book that you love and come out of there thinking, why did they leave out this? And why did they leave out that? And, you know, so, so that was really wanting to, to, you know, when you take a book to a movie, you want to make it feel like a movie. Yeah. And sometimes that means you have to let things go yeah. that are in the book. Um, but I think we did a pretty good job. I personally really like the movie, and I never read the book. Well, there you so go. I'm not sure. Do you think people would like the movie? I mean, I, so far they seem to. Um, you know, uh, we showed it, to, when we were cutting the film, we showed it to a lot of kids to get their responses and their feedback so we could get a sense of what worked for them and what didn't. Um, and uh, kids really seem to respond to it. That's good. What was the hardest part of making the two child actors act deaf? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the child actors is deaf. Uh -huh. uh, Millie Simmons, who plays Rose in yeah. the black and white part, she is deaf. So, didn't have to teach her how to act deaf. Uh -huh. um, ben uh, starts out hearing yeah. and then loses his hearing. So, he, um, he and Todd did do some things, Todd is the director, yeah. where uh, like Todd would put noise-canceling headphones on him and they'd walk around the city just to get a sense of maybe how it feel, you know, how vulnerable you can feel. Because he wanted to make sure, you know, Ben, Ben wasn't born deaf. Yeah. So he knew how to, he, he had heard, and now he was suddenly in a very vulnerable place where he'd lost the sense that he'd had up until then. So, uh, so I think that helped, that kind of, you know, this is what it would really feel like. How did you make the part where Rose was explaining the, her story to Ben? You mean when she, was, when she was writing it down? The panorama. Oh, the panorama? Yeah. So that's a real museum. That, that model really exists. Uh, there was a World's Fair in 1964, you know, like 100 years yeah. ago, uh, where they built a, a model of New York City and, made, and they put in every single building that existed at the time. Um, and people loved it so much that they kept it. And I think they adapted and put in new buildings now as, you know, yeah. Um, but it's a really cool, it's a really cool display. In fact, when we were shooting there, um, they, you know, they were like, please be careful, please be careful, please be careful. And in fact, somebody, and I'm not sure who it was, did step on the George Washington Bridge. But we fixed it. Uh -huh. Along with the panorama, um, the part where Rose is explaining the, her story to Ben with the piece of paper, mm -hmm. how did you shoot that? You know, uh, we were really trying to figure out how to do it so that it wasn't just somebody talking. Um, and that's when we came up with the idea of doing those miniatures at the yeah. very end, so that you got to see the story unfold, but in a way that kind of reflected a little, like, the dioramas at the museum and the whole idea of, like, building these little worlds. Uh, so that was, that was the method that the director chose, and I think it, it, it keeps you very present for Rose's story, instead of maybe like if she was just like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, you might start to tune out a little. Was it hard making the movie more about sight than sound for the black and white part? Um, you know, I think the, I think the sound is obviously very important, and the music, Yeah. Um, kind of helps propel the narratives together, the two stories together. Yes. Um, so, but you're right, in the black and white part, it was very important, not only, not only was the sound very important, but because nobody could, was speaking and couldn't understand what they were saying, I guess they were, they were speaking, but yeah. we didn't hear them, um, was to give a very visual sense of what little Rose was going through, yeah. like kind of trapped in her room and her father and all that. Um, so it was, you know, it was tough. It was a challenge. For the characters in the black and white, were they not actually talking or were they talking and we just turned off the They were talking, we just turned off the sound. Because otherwise they'd be like, you know. 
So when the father is saying, you know, go to your room, yeah. sometimes you can see, you, you can tell what he's saying, right? For the cars in the um, the twenties, for Rose's old past, mm -hmm. did you use actual cars or did you use? We used actual cars. Did you find tw actual twenties cars? Mm -hmm. There's people that collect them. Yeah. And they keep them in like fantastic condition. They all still run. My I mean, does oh, he does. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you know they'd be a little tricky. Like when we would have scenes where cars were, you know, driving behind her. Um, you know, sometimes those cars would break down, or they'd just decide they weren't driving that day. You know, they were just like, I'm, you know, I'm tired, I'm, I'm 100 years old. Yeah. So for Ben's, for 70s New York, did, mm -hmm. you, did you actually base it on 70s New York? We actually did, and that's an interesting question because, you know, I think people don't realize, have you ever been to New York? Uh, no. Well, uh, but you've probably seen it in movies. And yeah. So I think people have a vision of New York now and they don't re remember uh, or know that in the 70s it was, um, it was really kind of falling apart. It was really dirty. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and we really wanted to give a sense of that. That there was, it was super vibrant, but there was also a little element you know, of danger there as well. Yeah. Is, was it Greenwater, Minnesota? Where Gunflint. Yeah, Gunflint. They said, is that a real place? Yeah, I think it is. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Apart from the movie adaptation and the book, was Ben, like, not really scared of wolves, but did he have nightmares that vivid as well in the book? Yes, he did. Did you read the book before you like, produced it? I did. I did. I read, I read the script first. And then I looked at the book because the script made me really interested to see, in some ways, like what he left out, what was still there. And it, as I said, it is pretty faithful. Yeah. And how was making the rest of the set for the, like, the movie itself? Well, you know, one of the great things we got to do in this movie was shoot in the Museum of Natural History. Yeah. We had six nights there. And we would go just as the museum was closing. And we would stay until like four in the morning. Um, and it was kind of crazy to walk around that place, you know, when it was dark outside and when it was totally empty, because that place is never totally empty. Um, so uh, so the, a lot of the sets, since we only had six days there, a lot of the sets were based on what we did, you know, yeah. we, we do, you know, build a set somewhere else that was supposed to look like the museum and things like that. For the 20s uh, set, was it mostly facades, or did you have some real buildings? We had a lot of real buildings. I mean, what the production designer would do is, you know, Rose gets off the ferry, for example, when yeah. she comes, is coming into New York from, from her home, um, and he would show us a picture, like, this is what it looks like now, you know, this building, and um, this is what it looked like in 1927, and sometimes, it was pretty easy to, to change it back to the to 1927. Sometimes it was just like, you know, changing a storefront or something like that. Yeah. And sometimes it was so hard we couldn't do it. To get the the clothing correct for the eras, was it like hard or was it pretty simple? Well, we worked with a costume designer named Sandy Powell, and she did a tremendous amount of research. And um, you know to make sure that the clothes were exactly right. Yeah. Um, and you know when she did the '70s, Jaden, who plays Jamie, yeah, he, um, she gave him you know his his jeans, yeah. and he had to lie down on the floor to zip them up because they were so tight. And she was like, "Welcome to the '70s, kid. That's the way it is." Um, and because people just wore different kinds of clothes, they fit their bodies differently, yeah. you know. And so it's clothes, it's hair, you know, like Ben's longish hair. That was very common for little boys to have hair that long in the 70s, you know. Yeah. Um, so all of those things, you know, if you were going to be in our 70s movie, you know, we would probably have to give you a different haircut, different clothes, you know, just like 
kind of style you just a little differently so you still look like you, but you look like a kid from 1977. Yes. So this will wrap up our conversation with Christine. Uh, if you want more content like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of first of new videos. This is Abraham Finer, and this was recording for Kids First. <laughs>